Scalability and having your application handle massive amounts of traffic is always on the mind of growing startups and huge products. In this video, we'll be creating a fast API application that has thousands of concurrent users all posting requests multiple times per second. And we'll be saving those requests to a database. Now, to do this without having our application fail, we'll be making all processes within our application completely asynchronous. And we'll be using a Neon Postgres database that will scale with demand of our users. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I have helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. Now, let's dive into some code. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build a fast API application that is ready for massive amounts of traffic, like thousands and thousands of requests every second by you know thousands and thousands of different types of people all over the world. And so if we're looking at this, I'm gonna start by just going through each of our things. So we have our schemas, which is our Pydantic uh, validation models. We have our models.py, which is gonna be our entity in the database. So we have our new database table that we're gonna be creating called products. Our product is gonna have an ID, a name, and simply a price. So we're gonna be creating a bunch of products, like thousands of products um, every like couple seconds. And then we're gonna be fetching all of those products and watching our fast API application and our database scale appropriately. Um, we have our main.py file, which in essence has a root um, path, which it says welcome to fast API plus neon demo. And then we have our products, which we create a new product. So we just pass in a product create, and then we return a product read. And we can see all that right here, or we're just creating a new product, saving it into our database, and then returning that one product. And then in our uh, get list products, we can see that we select and return all of the products that we currently have. And then we are passing in a single ID for our last endpoint, and then returning that one product. And then we have our database.py file, which we need to pass in our database URL, which we're gonna be using a cloud provider called Neon for. And then we're gonna have our SQL Alchemy create the table that's needed. Here's our create async engine. So we're creating an asynchronous engine in our SQL model. Um, and we're also allowing a little bit more overflow and pool timeout, um, which will allow us to just have bigger queries that we can pass into our database. We have our session factory and then we initialize our database and we are calling that in our uh, main.py file up here um, in our lifespan. So when we start our application, we initialize our DB, which creates it in our Neon environment. So the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and go to neon.tech and sign up. Neon.tech is a popular uh, product that uses Postgres and it just allows you to automatically scale your database efficiently. So we can see right here, the database you love, which is Postgres on a serverless platform designed to help you build reliable and scalable applications faster. And it has instant provisioning where we can just instantly create a, a Postgres database and then we can just assign it to our product. It works with your stack. And as you know, we're using Python. So we'll kind of go over all those details. So go ahead, create an account. And when you create an account, it's going to bring you to a, a new page that says create project. Um, they have a free version of Neon, which I'm gonna be using in this tutorial. The free version is perfect, 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 perfect for side projects. So if you're creating a side project or following along in a tutorial, or you just wanna create a new database for like a side project, but you don't wanna like host it in SQLite or figure out how to host your uh, Postgres database, just use Neon has a lot of uh, free stuff out of the box, which is amazing. So we need to create our project name. So I'm gonna call this load testing YouTube. I'm gonna have Postgres version of 17. If you open this up, you can see that's the latest version at the time of this recording. I'm gonna be using AWS over Azure, and I'm gonna say create project. Now, when you create the project, it's going to give you this URL right here. Now, this URL is almost perfect for Python. There is a couple changes we'll need to make, and that's because of the libraries we use in Python. And if you didn't copy it, you can click connect and find it right here as well. So go ahead and copy it. This is the password. You'll probably wanna keep this hidden. I'll be deleting this database after this video, but um, feel free to make sure that's hidden from other users. And what we can do is go back to our code and go into database.py. Now in our database.py file, we can just paste that in here. So PostgreSQL colon slash slash our neon DB owner, which is what we just got. 
with all this information. Now, the first change we need is this question mark SSL mode equals required. Just remove this mode at the end. We just want SSL equals require. And the last one we want is this PostgreSQL right here. We want to say PostgreSQL plus async PG. And that's going to be a library that we pass in right here. So here's a requirements.txt file. We have our fast API, Uvicorn, SQL Alchemy, async PG, and Pydantic. Um, this allows us to be able to use Postgres uh, a little bit easier for Python applications. So make sure it's PostgreSQL plus async PG, um, colon slash slash. And then over here, we just say SSL equals require. All right, let's go ahead and just run this application real quick. So CD and do our app. And now I'm going to say Uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. When we get this, let's open up our browser, which is right here. Refresh, and we can see our app. So we have our root, try it out, execute. Welcome to Fast API plus Neon uh, database. And here we can fetch all of our products, which is going to be empty, and we can create new products. So our API endpoints are showing, and they work. So now we want to do is just let's just create a product real quick. I'm just going to call this string and make it ten. If I say execute here, we can see we now have a new uh, product with a name of string, price 10 with an ID of one. If we come back to Neon and we go to tables, we can make sure that we are on our Neon DB products table. So our Neon DB products table. And here we can see our one um, item we just created, which is string 10 with an ID of one. Now what we want to do is create a locust file in our application which will allow us to be able to mimic thousands of users all creating thousands of requests per second. And we'll see if my machine A can uh, keep up with it and B watch uh, all of our applications just kind of get saved to a database as it scales and consumes all of our endpoints properly so we don't have to worry about anything failing. So if we go back into our application, what we can do is inside our app, let's create a new file called locustfile.py. Now the first thing we are going to add in here is just say from locust import HTTP user task in between and then we'll import random and logging. But we're going to create a new class called fast API user which takes in our HTTP user that we just imported from locust which represents a actual user in our application. Wait time is how long does it take for a user to make a request to our application. We're going to say anywhere from 0.1 second to one second, which is going to be really on the fast side of how users really work in applications. 0.1 to one second is considered really fast. Here, we're going to keep uh, track of product IDs, which is going to allow us just to be able to fetch IDs later on pretty quick. And then we just want to initialize our user session. So when this starts up, we're just going to get a test connection to make sure everything's working correctly. Now, the first thing we are going to add in here is something called a task. Now, a task is weighted by one, two, three, and there might be some other numbers. I'm not 100% sure, but what we can do with these task weights is represent how often these items should be called. So we're going to say get product self, try, we're going to look in our product ID list, and then based on the IDs in this list, we're going to create a random product ID and then fetch that from our application. If not, we're just going to create a new ID, which will probably cause a fail um, in the very beginning, but that's totally fine. And if we throw, if we catch any exceptions, we'll just throw it. The second task we are going to create is going to be creating a product for itself, which is higher weights for creation. So what we're doing here is we're just creating a new product based on a random ID and then based on random uh, values. We're saving that product. And if we get a 200, we're saving that ID to our product ID so we can uh, call the get product a little bit easier. And then lastly, we have our last task, which is just fetching all of the products that we have. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. So the first thing we need to do is run our actual app. And we can do that by just doing our Uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. And now what we're going to do is create another terminal. And now let's go ahead and jump into our app so we can CD into our app. And now we need to run our locust file. And we can do this by saying locust dash F and then say where our locust file is and we're already in our app folder. So we can just say locust file dot pi and our host is going to be on our HTTP localhost port 8000, which is our fast API application. Let's go ahead and run that. 
When this is ran, we can see there's a new web page at 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 at port 8089. If we go to our browser, we can see I already have this open. I'm going to refresh. And here we can start a new load test. So we can say number of users. So to start, we can say we want uh, 200 users and we want them to add uh, maybe 30 users every second until we hit our 200. So is that even possible? No, let's do 25. 25, because I think we'll get like a awkward number. And then we can say our at our local host or port 80, 8,000, which is our fast API. And then we have some um, advanced features that we can just ignore for right now. So let's go ahead and click start. We can see everything starting. And now we have our post requests, our get requests. Um, we can see we get one failure and that's because we're probably fetching an ID that doesn't exist yet. And we are just calling a whole bunch of requests right now. We have, we're calling a whole bunch of gets. And if we fetch by post, I mean, we should be doing a lot more than just one post. We currently have 200 users all, uh, doing this at the same time. If we go to our charts, we can see total requests per second. It's shooting up and we're doing about 200 requests per second. Our response time is slowing down a little bit as we get more and more users on our application and you know they're sending a request every 0.1 to one second. And you can see that we quickly shot up to uh, 200 users. Now, just for uh, testing purposes, let's go ahead and stop. And then right here in our failures, we can see that we got 0% failures. We had like a couple failures maybe in the very beginning, but it was so small that we just consumed a zero. If we come in here and we refresh this database, we can see that there is a ton of new products. It only shows 50 at a time. You can go up to 500 at a time. So it'll show 500. I mean, we just made a ton of objects in our database. If you open up the settings button and you click table count rows, we can see that it created 2,200 records in that entire time it was running. 2,200 records with zero failures. That's pretty good for an app that's just running on your machine. Let's go ahead and rerun our Locust again. Say new, we want it to have 1000 users and we are going to upgrade by 50 at a time. Say start. Let's see how this works out. Everything seems to be working well. Our response, pers uh, it's kind of slow. Our users are shooting up. We're now at 550. It's going up to 700. We have yet to have any failures. Our charts are actually doing pretty well. Number of users, we've now hit 200. Oh, that was our last chart. We're over here now. Okay. Look at everything's looking pretty good. I mean, our response time's not the, the greatest right now, but it's also shooting up. You guys remember that all these users are running on my machine. I use a MacBook Pro. Yeah, uh, my MacBook Pro is able to handle 1,000 users. And what's great is if we're over here and let's just refresh this real quick. If we refresh this and then say count, like we're already up 3,000 records built um, inside our database right now and everything is working correctly. Let's go back to our locus. Let's stop real quick and let's see like how crazy we can get. Let's try like 5,000 users and let's ramp up at 200 users at a time. So this is mimicking 5,000 people concurrently on our application calling API endpoints every 0.1 to one second and I think we said 200 users at a time, like we're already at 2000 users, uh, 2,800, only one failure so far. So that's because it looks like our, like, uh, our connection was reset. So far we have 5,000 users all calling API endpoints every second or less. And we only have one failure. I mean, this is impressive stuff. Let's go ahead and just run this a little bit longer. Let's go ahead, stop. Let's go back to our database, refresh, and we can see it's at almost 4,000 records already. So if we could just like kind of go through this, we have 4,000 records uh, just about in our database. And our application was able to scale perfectly. I mean, our fast API application through one error the entire time, Neon was able to scale appropriately with uh, hardware and being able to consume items. All right, so the very last thing I want to try and do here is let's go back into our code 
And I want to stop this real quick, both of them. So my Locust and my Fast API. I want to go back into my Locust and I'm going to say create the product is going to have a weight of one. And I'm just going to delete these other tasks. See what happens. I'm just going to just absolutely try and create so much data and just see what happens from it. So if we now go ahead, save our application and we start that up. And then we start up our Locust back into our uh, app. Let's go to our Locust and let's say number of users is gonna be a thousand. We want to ramp up 50 per second. And this is just going to be calling the create the whole time. Start. All right, we'll see what happens here. So we are only calling the posts, I believe. Yeah, because here's the, yeah, so this is getting all of the requests right here. It says it's already called it 5,000 times? No. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> We're at 12,000. We'll just let it keep going for a little bit longer. So our RPS is dropping a little bit. Failures is sitting at 0%. If we refresh this again, 16,000. If we jump over to monitoring, we can kind of see where it is. Oops. So here we can see it scaling um, right here with RAM used. So our RAM is increasing our CPU. So it's allocated at 0.25. We can see that it kind of uh, shoots up a little bit and then evens out. So the auto scaling is happening. So it is auto scaling to a degree for us. We have an allocated X amount. Um, we can see it jump up right here, the CPU. So it goes from 0.25 to 0.75. So Neon is auto scaling for us. If we go back into our tables, all right, we're at 28,000 rows. I mean, this is by far more requests than a normal application has. And we're hosting it, one, locally on our physical machine. And then uh, the free tier of Neon is able to scale and allocate the, the resources that we need. So everything's looking really, really good. All right. So yeah. Uh, everything's scaling, able to consume this very easily. Absolutely zero failures. Everything's golden. So hope you're able to learn something in this video. And uh, I'll see you in the next.